I just wanted to talk a little bit more about DCIS today. I've been avoiding this topic um, intentionally because it's a really sensitive one for me. I feel like early on in my journey, I made a decision about DCIS that was false, and I followed um, a frame of thought and a culture around DCIS that was inaccurate, and that's really embarrassing to me. But I've become kind of an influencer now on the subject of DCIS, so I feel like it's time to come clean about that and just reveal kind of what I've learned, all the different ways I've swung from this side of the pendulum over to this side of the pendulum and maybe settled in the middle a little bit. I have a, a group on Facebook called Thriving with DCIS, and I created that back in the days when I was still trying to figure out exactly what DCIS was and what it meant for us as breast cancer survivors. Um, there's a whole school of thought that says DCIS is not cancer. And I think, honestly, it's still kind of a mystery um, to the scientists and the clinicians whether or not it is truly cancer or if it's something sub-cancer-ish. But that's beside the point. What, what's really important is um, that it can become cancer. And sometimes, with certain characteristics, it does become cancer. And I think what I thought was um, initially early in my story, I thought that there was no way to know whether it would become cancer or not, but most times it didn't. And what I found out is that there is a way to know if it's likely to become cancer, if it's dangerous. It's very simple. And unfortunately, all of the first few doctors that I talked to about it didn't share that with me and didn't share the science with me, and I'm not sure why. But for whatever reason, they didn't, and they didn't educate me. I was super, super eager to be educated. And just in case you're in that same position, um, I made this video uh, a while back, and it's gotten lots and lots of views, that talks about what makes DCIS dangerous. And that is just this simple thing called comedonecrosis, that at this point in time in history, that is what is considered the characteristic of DCIS that makes it likely to become cancer there is still a really strong, huge community of women who have DCIS and who believe that it is in no way dangerous and that it is in no way associated with cancer. And that is an extreme view, and it's one that can you can kind of catch on to, especially if you're in the holistic community, which I was and am still as a holistic nutritionist and a functional nutritionist. So... I just want to share that I've come a long way from that very simplistic black and white way of seeing DCIS, and I hope that you will too if you've been converted to the, the ranks of those who think that it is not cancer. I think this is mainly going on in Facebook groups. There are a number of Facebook groups that are adamantly opposed to it being called cancer. Um, uh, or even pre-cancer. And I think where they get this is that there is a new movement in science and in clinical trial settings where early stage DCIS, um, the ones that don't have the characteristics that are dangerous, that don't have comedonecrosis involved, those women can join a trial that is just watching and waiting and seeing if it progresses. Because it is it is believed to be um, less threatening in its early stages than we once thought. And so clinicians, especially here on the West Coast, are very concerned that we are over-treating DCIS, and that is a real issue. Uh, a lot of clinicians um, around the U.S. especially, I think, are going straight to surgery no matter how severe your case is. And that is over-treatment in many cases. Um, especially when there is no comedonecrosis, as I've said in my other video, which I will point you to at the end of this video for sure. But I just want to say that that is a really uh, a dangerous stance to take to say that DCIS is not um, going to become cancer, is not cancerous. Um, and I personally have paid a price for waiting too long and believing that it was not a threat at all to me. And I think that my body would look differently right now if I had taken it more seriously and if I had known that comedonecrosis was the characteristic to look for and how quickly it can come on. And in my case, it came on very quickly. After having almost no DCIS and no calcifications, I had quite a large amount of both. 
and that was after my biopsy and I think some people respond to biopsy with a lot of growth and some people don't but I really regret not being a little bit more concerned and urgent in my uh, treatment plan in my surgery plan I think that I would have had more skin to work with and I would have ended up with a, a Goldilocks procedure on my left where I am very concave now and um, I have a Goldilocks on my right but I'm very asymmetric because of my lack of attention to the severity of DCIS and lack of speed to respond to it. Now I don't want this to set people in motion and, and feeling panicked to find a surgeon and have surgery right away. You really want to find the right surgeon and get the right closure and get educated ahead of time. But I took a very long time. I took a full year in between uh, my biopsies and um, that was too long. So I really regret having that very simplistic black and white understanding of how threatening DCIS is. And that's why I made that first video about comedonecrosis. But my regret is not taking it seriously enough and so I want to share that because I've noticed that there are people kind of encroaching on my Facebook group thriving with DCIS from that community that says it's not cancer trying to come in and kind of let their um, their ideas and their ideology be known and to sway people away from taking DCIS seriously and I don't want to see that happen in any of my communities including this community here on YouTube. So I just wanted to take a little bit st stronger stance on this issue and share with you some of my regrets about that and my misunderstanding about that. My understanding now is that a good deal of the time women will not need to have surgery for DCIS and they can live with it the rest of their lives without any trouble. And the only way to know is by continuing to do scans, either ultrasounds or mammograms, depending on how dense your breast tissue is. And 3D mammograms may be more useful now that we have those too. But watching and scanning is an important part of that process. And you shouldn't ignore your DCIS, no matter how small or early stage it is. And then there are those of us who, for whatever reason, whether it's because of the biopsy or not, I still will never know, um, have had progression of DCIS and those of us that have had progression toward ne comedonecrosis or who are in the state of comedonecrosis currently will need to have some action whether it's taking some anti-estrogen endocrine therapy uh, tamoxifen or an AI that could be your your in intervention if you're really attached to your breasts your doctor might offer you that that's definitely on the scene now as a possible viable intervention as opposed to surgery. Or you may need surgery, especially if it is progressing at the rate that mine was. And you really need to find a surgeon that you trust and an oncologist that you trust to help you through that decision-making process. That is not for me to help you through. I am not a doctor and I don't seek to advise anyone on that. Um, but you do need to find someone you trust that you can really share information with if you're like me and you need scientific proof and data to back up your decisions and you need to find a doctor that's willing to give you that scientific information. And that's what I recommend and that's what I wish that I had done earlier. So hopefully this helps you if you have DCIS, if you've just been diagnosed. This is what I would have liked someone to tell me as a patient in, in your shoes. So hopefully this helps you. And if you direct any specific medical questions to me in the comments, I will not be able to answer them because I am not a doctor. I'm a holistic nutritionist and I have no business answering these kinds of questions. I'm just speaking as a peer in this role today and sharing my story. So I hope it helps you. And from now on, I'm going to be doing more like a, a monthly video here on YouTube because I'm going to focus at least for the next few months on getting my podcast out. I'm starting a new podcast. I have about 65 videos here on YouTube, so I'm going to start a new kind of adventure podcasting, and I'll have a weekly podcast for a while, so my YouTube videos will go back to about monthly. But you can always look back in the backlogs and look at my old videos. Most people haven't realized that I have so many here, so you can look for those on my YouTube page. Uh, at Estrogen Diaries. And please look for my new podcast at, on June 30th. It's launching and I will have that out. It will be called A Breast Cancer Diary. And I have abreastcancerdiary.com as my website if you'd like to get on the newsletter 
and just be updated about all the episodes coming out. I'll be mostly talking to other women who are going to be telling their stories and things that they regret or wish that they had known early on and kind of getting behind the veil, bursting the bubble and learning about some kind of secret things um, about late stage breast cancer or certain procedures like deep flap. Things that we don't generally hear about or talk about much in the breast cancer community that people are curious about. So look for that and I will see you there or you will hear me there. And I'll see you back here on YouTube on a monthly basis. See you then.